Hello, thanks for following our seminar for English teachers at UNED. Uh, my name is Jomia Cunha and I'm the head of the major in teaching English for primary school. Today for this session we invited um, Alfieri Avilan. He's certified master trainer and presenter from Pearson Education and he's part of the efficacy and academic consultancy team for the Central American region and the Caribbean. Right. Thanks for being with us today. No, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. That's, that doesn't really say what I, what I am. I, I'm a teacher. That's what I am. Okay. Um, Alfieri, thanks mm -hmm. for being with us today. And your, te your topic is moving towards efficient, efficient approaches in language teaching and learning. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, the whole idea of this topic is to provide uh, teachers with specific strategies to use day to day in their lessons and they're based on 21st century skills and assessment for learning so it's it's a combination of both topics into a single thread what are some of these skills and abilities teachers are expected to develop for this purpose i i would say it's, it's not about teachers to develop the skills it's for teachers to help learners develop the skills oh, okay? okay so it's a, we we are just a vehicle for for uh, I think we're in the middle of the process. We're just a tiny part of the process, yet very important. But I think we need to understand, firstly, the importance of the changes that we're going through in every aspect of life um, led by technology. So this, uh, what we need to understand as teachers is that we need to catch up and we need to be up to date in the tendencies, in the new tendencies in, in teaching. So we forget about the role of the teacher as authority in the classroom. It's basically most uh, focused on the students. Right? It's basically learner-centered. It is a hundred percent learner-centered uh, approach. It's uh, uh, the basis of informed approaches. Uh, it's to consider uh, teachers, learners, uh, environment, uh, obviously, the goals, the, the target, the objective, it's a whole combination. It's a very holistic combination process. Yeah? Okay. What would be a piece of advice for a non-digital native teacher? <laughs> because, you know, you talk about catch up with the new trends and stuff, mm -hmm. but probably for a, you know, a person from the old school, it might be a lot difficult to switch to new ideas, new methods, and new ways of doing things, right? right? Firstly, I think um, it's to understand what technology means to the learner and what technology means to the teacher. Because there are two different perspectives. For learner, it's a way of life, okay? It's a way of learning in this case. So it's not the environment, it's not the tool, but that's we teachers see it. We see it as a tool to uh, perhaps enhance the opportunities for learning. But indeed, it's, it has to, uh, we have to meet halfway here and understand the necessities of the learner so we can use technology efficiently. And when we think about technology, we should not think about, as I always say, uh, a lab created by Na NASA or the NSA or computers or satellites in the classroom. It's just the little things that we can use from a cell phone to a whiteboard, okay, all the way through a projector or a, a computer to enhance the opportunities of learning uh, within the classroom. That's what I think uh, we should start with, understanding where these two ideas meet. Okay. You tell us about, you know, like new trends, ways of doing things differently, mm -hmm. and you also talked about assessment. Yes. Because it's not only doing things differently in the class in terms of methodology, but also how to assess students, right? So what are the implications? How would you promote uh, meaningful learning through it? Perfect. Great question. <laughs> I think the key here is not to wait to develop, as I said, great tools for assessment, a rubric or a portfolio or a checklist. It, it begins with the simplest things in the classroom. as a, an, a very good question, a powerful question, okay? Knowing where your students are, or your learners are in this case, are standing versus where they're supposed to be, 
diagnose him with a simple question uh, and then make quick stops and check every now and then for you to readjust. The whole concept is to readjust according to what your learners are providing as informal feedback in the classroom, not waiting until the process has been completed to uh, make decisions, instructional decisions. So from the simplest thing of observation yeah. that allows you to realize how much they're getting so you can readjust your teaching on the spot. Yeah? So I think it's, it's a basic term. It's, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, term that we need to implement ASIP in the classroom. You pinpoint on, on you know, the job of the teacher being observant. Mm -hmm. um, try to solve situations in the classroom. And that takes us to the topic of um, action research. Right. How do you think that contributes to improve the environment in the language learning classroom? The capacity of a teacher to sit down and begin the change, because we're, we're speaking about education, we need to speak definitely about changes, but changes do not happen on their own. Changes are, are to be measured, they are to be well informed, they are to be reported to the rest of my team or to my colleagues, because in the center of all this process is the learners. So the moment we decide to conduct these changes, then action research goes, goes hand in hand. Why? Because I need to um, study, I need to say, okay, this is the problem I have. How am I going to tackle this problem? What do I need in order to tackle this problem efficiently? How to follow up. How to follow up assessment for learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I guess that action research w has come to aid improving uh, the process for learners and for teachers as well. And of course, institutions are behind here as well. So it, it serves a purpose for everyone. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, if I ask you to summarize mm -hmm. your whole presentation in a few words, how would you do it? Like, what would you, what would be the main points to, to consider? I think it is to think about your learners first, their needs, to put them in the center of the process and to be very efficient in the strategies to apply. Think about what you want them to achieve and then make your plan based upon this. Thank you so much. And thank you for your attention.